Okay, we're being recorded. Thanks for reminding me, I appreciate it. That's one of the things I don't remember to do. Um, so the, this is um, a reference, an online student readiness resource that's available to you that I wanted to make sure that you were aware of. So you can check that out. And um, this is an orientation to Canvas. If you haven't used Canvas before, um, you can uh, click on this particular link. It gives you an opportunity to self-enroll in an orientation and a lot of great information about Canvas and how to use Canvas. Um, again, more um, student resources. Um, so student conduct standards, um, academic dishonesty information, access to uh, disabled students programs, and also programs to help you succeed as a student. Um, this is, um, again, the guidance in terms of setting your campus notifications. So depending on how you want to receive Anything that I send as an announcement or any information from Canvas, you can use this information to go ahead and get yourself set up. And um, Canvas help for students. Here's the student help desk phone number um, and also the 24 seven Canvas support number uh, for Fresno City College is right here as well. This is, um, this is what I call the cyber cafe. So if, if there's just something that you're wanting to, hey, you know what, I'm starting to work on that discussion board and I'm a little confused and Mr. Gilmore hasn't gotten back to me or whatever, this is a way for you to reach out to other students in the class just to see whether um, maybe they may be able to provide some information to you. Um, it's, it's a place to, you know, check in. It's another way to get in contact with me. I usually check this every few days or so just to see whether anybody has posted anything. Um, Lillian gave us a great, um, great uh, shout out here in terms of showing us how to use this. So thank you for that. Um, but it's a resource for you to use to communicate, not so much with me, but more, more with the other students in the class. This is a copy um, of the um, PowerPoint that we're going to go through in just a few minutes. Um, and you'll know again that the syllabus can be found either here or on the home screen. And here's your first quiz, which is all about the syllabus. So um, that is all of modular one. What I want to do really quickly is take you through, this is kind of a unique modular because it's sort of the orientation modular. But I want to show you next week's, which you guys don't have access to yet. Um, this one will open, This one opens on January 18th at eight o'clock in the morning. So every Monday morning, as I said before, you'll be able to go into the next modular. But this one um, that I can show you here, this is, um, this is the first one where we're really getting into the content of the class and talking about um, social welfare, sort of a historical perspective of social welfare. So again, walking you through, and. I wanted to share this with you because I want you to see what a more typical modular looks like. Um, so here's your learning objectives. Um, and then here is the PowerPoint um, with all of the information.
Here is the first recorded lecture. Um, so for this particular modular, it took me four videos to do. I try to keep the videos, I really try to keep them at about 15 minutes each, but most of them are unfortunately a little bit longer. But I didn't want you to have to sit through an hour and a half of video. So I broke them up and that's how I've done it in all the modulars. So this is modular one lecture, one of four. Here is a great additional video that I wanted you to see that talks about the various roles that um, individuals play in terms of social work, give you a little bit broader perspective. Now here's your modular one lecture, two of four. Here is another video I wanted you to watch that really um, delves into the history of social work. Here is modular one lecture three of four. Um, here's another uh, video uh, talking about the life and work of Jane Addams, who you'll learn more about once you get into the modular. Here's the final lecture video. Here is our final additional video about the Great Society programs of the 1960s. Here is the discussion board for this particular modular, which we'll talk about next Tuesday in depth. If you want to come and join us for office hours, we'll spend some time going into this and figuring out what exactly we're looking for. And then here is the quiz. So that is the structure of almost every single modular. The way the class is organized is <coughs> you will have four modulars. So here you've got modular one, modular two, modular three, modular four, and then you have your first exam. And the first exam will be only on the content from those first four modulars or chapters. And these all coincide with the book and the chapters in the book. Um, the exam is broken up into two parts because when you take an exam on Canvas, it requires that you can't stop and walk away and, and have the computer go into sleep mode, it then thinks that you're finished taking the exam. So when I had these both together, I had folks that were like online for like three hours trying to get this, this stuff all done. So I decided to break up the um, true false multiple choice questions from the essay questions. <coughs> You'll have 25 true false multiple choice questions, each worth two points. And you will have six essay questions, each worth five points for a total of 30 points. Prior to the exam, I will email or post the essay questions. So you will not just have to open up this part of the exam and you know, start figuring out you know, how am I gonna answer these questions. You can actually do some prep work ahead of time. I'll, I'll probably provide them about a week ahead of time so that you could actually, if you wanted to, draft your responses on a Word document, do, you know, do some spell checks, do some grammar checks, make sure your writing is in really good shape. And then when you're ready, you can open up the exam, copy and paste your answers onto the exam uh, template and call it good but I wanted to give people an opportunity to do the best job they could on these essay questions. And sometimes when you, you, know, you just open these and, and you don't know what the content's gonna be about, it can be a little overwhelming. So I wanted to try to make it as easy as possible. And then it falls in the same system. So now you've got uh, modular five, modular six, modular seven, modular eight, and now you have the second exam. 
which again will only cover the content from those four modulars. And then just to finish it off, you've got, um, that's our spring break, so we're not in school then. So you've got modular nine, 10, not, whoop. Oh, well, that's, a, no, modular nine, I forgot. Modular nine, I broke up into two parts because there's so much content. So two weeks on modular nine, modular 10, modular 11, modular 12, exam number three, and then this is just our class wrap up. So any questions on the modulars or how they're organized or what's expected or anything? Are the exams timed? No. Okay. And I'm sorry, Professor, the last exam is, that's our final before, um, Right, but the final, Jessica, the final is not comprehensive. It's just the last four chapters. It follows the same pattern as the other two exams. Okay, and um, along with, I'm sorry, along with the exam um, essay questions, will we also be able to have a study sheet for the multiple choice or is that just gonna I be? Don't, I don't do that because I think most of the answers are in the PowerPoints. Got it. So okay. I, would, I would be recommending that you be using the PowerPoints that are in each of the modulars as your study guide for the true false. In fact, when, I, when, when you sit down to do the true false part of the exams, I would have the PowerPoints printed out and sitting right there or on a separate screen or some, however you wanna do it. But all the answers that you need for the true false multiple choice questions, you'll be able to find in um, the PowerPoints. Fantastic, thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on the modulars? Good deal. Okay. Let's quickly look. So these all are, you know, all of the assignments. So these are all the discussion boards. Um, these are um, all the, the quizzes. Here are, here's exam one, true, false, essay questions. Exam two, true, false, essay questions. Exam three, um, and essay questions for exam three. But obviously all of these you, you will locate through going into the modulars. So, but if, you, if there's another place that you wanna look for them, you can find them in assignments. Same thing with the discussions. So um, here are all of the discussion boards. But again, probably the easier way for you guys to find all of them is by just systematically going through each of the modulars. And again, just focus on what's important, what, you know, what you're being asked to work on for that week. Just always know every Monday morning, I'm gonna wake up, there's gonna be an uh, email or an announcement there. Um, the quiz is gonna be open. The discussion board is gonna be open. All the content's gonna be open. For this week, all I have to focus on is that one modular. That's the easiest way to, I, I think to think about the way I've organized the class. Um, here are the quizzes. Here's the syllabus. Um, are folks familiar with what a rubric is? Mm -hmm. Some folks are, but let's go ahead and take a look at one. So, so for instance, let's look at discussion board for modular two. So um, there's basically 10 points that are available. And what I'm gonna grade you on are these criteria. So, um, so there, there's something in terms of what I wanted you to write on the discussion board where I'm asking you to select the roles you have been assigned and identify a project you might implement to support the residents through this situation. If you did a really good job, an original post is made that fulfills the requirements, you're gonna get four points. 
If you did a not so good job, you're gonna get two points. And if you didn't address this at all, or you just did a really lousy job, you're gonna get zero points, okay? Um, identify who would your target client consumer be. Again, if you did a really good job, two points. Not so good job, one point. Really lousy job, zero points. Services, describe the services you would provide. Two points if you did a great job, one point if you did a kind of medium job, zero points if you did a bad job. And then I'm asking you to reply to at least two of your peers. So as, as long as you do that, those replies, you're getting the full two points. But if you only do one reply, then you're gonna get one point. If you didn't do any reply, you'll get zero points. So let me, let me take you back to, let me pull up. Um, so if you, so here is your, for instance, here's your discussion board for um, week one. If you go up here to where these three little dots are, you're going to see something that says show rubric. And there's a rubric for every single discussion board. And so you always have an opportunity to go and see what exactly is it that he's looking for me to say, or what does he want to have addressed. And it's quite clearly articulated in the di directions for the discussion board. But if you need a reminder, or if you say, why did I only get two points when I should have gotten four points on that, you can go back and look at the rubric, and it should tell you where you didn't meet the expectations of the assignment. Any questions on the rubrics? Okay, great. And then um, the grades, obviously the quizzes and the true false multiple choice, as soon as you, as soon as you finish those, um, Canvas grades them automatically. And so you can go into your grades five minutes after you finished um, one of the quizzes or the, um, the true false multiple choice on the exams and you'll see what your score is. Um, usually um, I try to get the discussion boards done um, at least a week. When I say done, I mean graded, um, to try to get the discussion boards graded at least a week after they were due. Um, so again, just a reminder, work full time Monday through Friday. So my weekend is grading papers and getting things ready for the next week and those kinds of things. So the time that I'm grading your discussion board is usually on Saturday and Sunday. Um, for your exams and the essay questions, I at, um, it takes me two weeks to get through those. Um, so I'll have grades back on those for you two weeks after the closing date of the, um, the exams. Okay. Any questions on anything that we've covered so far? Okay. I want to take you back um, to modular one. Okay, so we're going to quickly go through an orientation on the syllabus. Um, so you can always refer back to this, but this is this is me um, and all my contact information. Um, this, if you ever need to know the section number, that's where you're going to find that. Um, so as I said before, you're welcome to contact me either through text or through voicemail, um, through Canvas through my Fresno City College email. Um, if, if you're gonna contact me, feel free to leave a text or voicemail. Um, but if you leave me a text message, make sure you tell me 
who you are so that when I get back to you, I have a kind of a point of reference. So you might say, um, hey, Mr. Gilmore, this is John from HS20. Um, again, this is the only class I teach. So if you're writing me and saying I, I'm one of your students, I'm going to know that you're in HS20. Um, but do let me know who you are when you're either leaving me a voicemail message or, um, or texting me. Let me know if you don't want me to leave a message if I call and you don't answer if I'm calling you back. If the issue is not urgent, it's really the best way to reach me is by email. Um, I usually look at my Fresno City College email on my lunch hour at work. So almost every day I'm looking at it. So if you send me something, I'm usually going to be able to get back to you in one to two days. So this is Human Services 20. It's three units. This course operates as an asynchronistic course. And what that means is that everyone works independently at their own pace through the content of the class. Um, we'll have a standing meeting each week, again, every Tuesday at 6, um, for students to ask questions or get guidance. But this is not a class where you come and I lecture on the content for three hours. Um, that is why you have those videos that are um, contained in the modulars. Uh, the course covers the introduction to the social, economic, political, historical, and philosophical components in the development of social welfare and social work in Western society. And emphasis is placed on the knowledge base, value system, and specific fields of social work practice. So we're going to spend a lot of time really beginning to understand what's the knowledge that a social worker needs to have. Um, I think somebody who's maybe less familiar with social work <coughs> may actually sort of operate from a place that say, well, social workers, aren't they just those really nice people that care about others and just have a really good heart and all of those kinds of things? And all of that is true. Um, but we also work from a knowledge base. The, there's research that's been done. We know how to effectively work with individuals, families, and communities. Um, and we make decisions and we implement programs and implement interventions based on a knowledge base that we have that you're gonna learn a lot about um, through this, this particular class. We also have a set of values that we use. Um, we um, are uh, guided by the Social Worker Code of Ethics, which we'll talk about um, in um, a couple of weeks. And, um, we also, there's a lot of very specific fields of social work. Um, there's um, social work that's specifically focused on children. There's social work that specifically focuses maybe with older adults. Um, there's clinical social work, there's hospital-based, school-based social work. So there's lots and lots of different ways that social work gets implemented in terms of our society. Here are the learning objectives. I am not going to read these to you. You can take a look at them yourself. Um, and here are the course objectives, of which there are many. But what we will do as our very last class is we'll go back and take a look at these and see, see whether these got accomplished or not. But this is what you should be expecting from me in terms of what you should be learning. Here is the required text. Um, I hope most of you got the announcement this morning um, that, um, or if you want, you can look at the syllabus. There's three options for the textbook. Um, so let me walk you through this really quickly. Um, there is an original textbook um, that was, um, that was created and is actually in its eighth edition. So we're looking for you at the very least to secure the eighth edition of Social Work and Social Welfare and Introduction. And here are the authors, as you can see. The um, original text has, I believe, 16 chapters. For this particular class, we are only covering the first 12 chapters. 
So what um, Fresno City College did was that they worked with the publisher and they were able to secure the creation of a sort of condensed um, version of the textbook that only contains the 12 chapters that we're covering. Um, I would say that if you're a person who is seriously thinking about a career in social work, the original text would be a good foundational uh, reference tool for you to have for future classes. So if you're thinking about social work for the future, if you're thinking about moving on to a bachelor's program, a master's program in social work, um, I would highly encourage you to think about buying the original textbook. Professor you, Gilmar? Uh, yes. Is, is this the original one? Because it says um, the empowerment series and it kind of threw me off. Yeah, no, you're right. That's the right one. Okay. And it says eighth, eighth edition, right, Jessica? Yes. Okay. Do you want to hold that up so maybe everybody can see it? Because that's what, that's the one that has the full chapters. That's the one that I was just talking about. There is another version, as I said, that has a condensed uh, set of chapters, only 12 chapters, I believe. And then there is a, there is an online version of the first book. And I gave you all that information in the syllabus and also in the announcement that I sent out this morning. Okay, any questions on the textbook? And I would say that you don't really need the textbook until next week. Um, you don't need it to get through the first week of, of assignments and things, okay? Um, there's also, I wanna make sure you were aware of the tutoring center and the writing and reading center. So these are both links to be able to get you to those resources. Participation and engagement. Um, so just to share with you guys, last semester was the first semester that I taught from start to finish an online class and it was weird. <laughs> Um, there were students who I saw on the very first night in this kind of a meeting that I literally never saw again. <laughs> and it seems so strange because I've been teaching for a number of years in the classroom. Um, I got to know them a little bit through their discussion boards and what they submitted. And um, some of them came to the office hours, but some of them chose not to. And again, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you guys whether you want, want to or not. But um, we did begin to find that people began to know each other through the comments that they were leaving with each other on the discussion boards. The folks that did attend the office hours, they got to know each other pretty well and those kinds of things. But it's definitely a very, very different experience than when we were in the classroom, right? So, um, so anyway, but we still want to try to create a sense of community. We still want to try to create a sense of working together with each other and supporting each other as, as much as we can. So um, given that, um, I would encourage you to, you know, use the discussion boards as a way to be able to get to know people and communicate with people. There's an interesting thing that I think um, is particularly relevant to social work classes. And that is that, um, and this definitely happens in the classroom setting, but I found that it also happened in things like the discussion board. Um, you know, we may be talking about a particular, a particular issue, maybe it's domestic violence, maybe it's um, sexual assault, uh, maybe it's substance abuse, um, and you very often will have people in the class who will maybe self-disclose that, you know, this is really important information to me because this was something that happened in my family, or this is something that happened to me, or um, those kinds of things. Um, so in this particular class, um, as really in all classes, and even on the online version, we practice the Vegas rule. What's talked about in this classroom, whether it's in a discussion board or in office hours, stays here. We do not go out and share this information with other people, right? So we've got that agreement? Yeah. 
Good, good. So my attendance policy, um, I am going to be tracking to see that you are present by the fact that you have done the discussion board and taken the quiz. So again, like I said before, the office hours are totally optional, but the one way that you will be marked as present in class is if you complete the discussion board and you complete the quiz or on the weeks that we're doing the exam, you complete the exam. So that's, that's how attendance gets, um, gets taken. And um, again, um, we can look at the, the syllabus and take a look at what would um, meet the qualifications for um, being dropped from the class. Um, if somebody does, is consistently absent for the first two weeks, um, because our date for doing the census is uh, February 1st. So by February 1st, we're supposed to have the class pretty much set in terms of who are my students and who are not my students. But if you have missed for several weeks between now and February 1st, um, that's probably gonna result in me dropping you. Um, so you wanna make sure that, um, that you're uh, completing the assignments and um, that you're staying in communication with me. Again, if you're not gonna, if you're, if you're running into challenges with the assignments, just keep me posted, keep me advised, okay? This is the other piece of advice that I would give to anybody who's taking this class. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to get 100% on everything but if you do every assignment, I can almost guarantee you you're gonna pass. So each of the quizzes are worth 10 points. Maybe you're getting discouraged because, oh my gosh, I only got five points on that quiz, or I only got you know five points on that discussion board. The students who pass the class are the students who complete all of the assignments. The students who don't pass the class are the ones who miss too many assignments and get zeros on those assignments. So if there's one piece of advice that I would share with you, I would say, do all of the assignments. Don't get too discouraged if you're not getting tens across the board. Um, certainly, um, you know, those are great, but I, it's been my experience that most of the students are gonna pass the class, maybe not with an A, but you're gonna pass the class, but it's the students who complete all the assignments that pass, so. Just, just, my, just my thoughts. Um, any questions on attendance? So here's the drop policy um, and there's more details about that um, in the um, syllabus and also, uh, yeah, in the syllabus. Um, So um, the three exams are all worth 80 points or 80 points each for a total of 240 points. There are three exams, just like we showed chapters one through four, five through eight and nine through 12. The exams are completed online on Canvas. Um, they're divided into two uh, assignments, the true false multiple choice. The essay questions is the second assignment. Um, again, 80 points. There is consideration for makeup exams, but it's got to be a serious emergency for me to reopen the exam for just one student. So if you think there's going to be some challenges with you not being able to complete the exams, um, you know, you got to let me know fairly early on. OK, um, the week that we are doing the exams, that's the only thing that you're doing. So. Um, I would just encourage you, you know, just concentrate on getting those, those done. Um, there are 13 quizzes at 10 points each. Um, so uh, the quizzes are completed online. Each quiz is a combination of multiple choice and true false. Um, again, the PowerPoint from that particular modular is your best friend in terms of completing those, um, 
those quizzes, but there is no makeup on the quizzes. So if you don't get it done, it's a zero and there's no going back and making up those points. Do the quizzes have time limits as well? Or no, no, they don't. Okay. And then there's 13 discussion boards, each worth 10 points for a total of 130 points. Um, and let me give you some, uh, there's a couple of things I want you to know about the discussion boards. Um, some of the discussion boards are pretty clear cut. It's like, you've got to identify, you've got to dig down, you've got to go back and look at the PowerPoint. You've got to come up with some concrete content based on what was either in the lecture or in one of the videos that you watched or was um, you know, in the PowerPoint or, or whatever. But there's some discussion boards where it's like, tell me what you think about this. Here's the situation, what would you do? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? But if you're gonna state an opinion, back it up. Tell me why that's the opinion you came up with, okay? And quite frankly, you could be telling me, well, I think that this is, it happened this way because the guy was X, Y, Z. And I can show you that, you know, in, in the scenario, you know, this is what I pulled out of the scenario. This happened, this happened. And that's why I came up with this recommendation for what should happen with this particular person, family, community. As long as you, it may not be what I, it may not be what I agree with. It may not have been the way that I did it, but if that was your opinion and you backed it up with, with something that you've pulled out of the material that was presented in that particular modular, you're going to get all the points because you've been able to back it up. So I want you to understand that some of the discussion boards are pretty clear cut, but the other discussion boards really require you to form an opinion and to be able to back up that opinion with content. Okay. So there are 500 points possible for the class and here's the breakdown. And um, for any students um, that need um, accommodation, um, we'll go ahead and be following up with those students just to make sure that all of the content here provides them with everything they need for reasonable accommodation. We do have to meet on the final date, even though we're not really doing an, an exam. So the school requires that we have to meet and we will meet and it'll just be an opportunity. I think last semester, the whole thing took like 45 minutes. And it's just a series of some discussions about what worked, what didn't work, what would you change? What did you like about the class? Those kinds of things. So we've already gone over the schedule um, of lecture topics and assignments. So let me come back to... So um, modular one, social welfare, past and present. Modular two, social work, and other helping professions. Modular three, we're gonna take a look at systems and ecological perspective, diversity and social justice, practice with families, individuals and groups, practice with agencies and the community, poverty, income assistance and homelessness, healthcare, uh, mental health, substance abuse and disabilities, the needs of children, youth and families, services for children, youth, and families, and older adults' needs and services. So those are the primary areas that we're taking a look at. So you know where to find the syllabus. You know you're going to get announcements and content every Monday. You're going to go modular to modular every single week. Um, all the assignments are laid out. All the lectures are there. Um, this was a lot of work last semester. I built all, I went out and found all these YouTube videos and created all these discussion boards and all that kind of stuff. So um, you guys are really benefiting from the fact that there was a lot of work that was done last semester. 
I'm probably going to go back and revise some of the videos because I'm realizing now that I was talking a lot about COVID last semester and, um, you know, and it was sort of like, I mean, it's still with us, but it, I think, you know, we're, we've got a changing perspective. So we need to take a look at that. So, um, but again, if you focus on mod the modular for that week and just getting through everything, um, I think you're going to do just fine. And again, just stay aware. You, you the discussion boards and the quizzes are due by Sunday night at 11.59. That's one minute before midnight, okay? And literally, I would see on my phone at times that somebody was just turned in a discussion board at 11.58, you know, on Sunday night. And that's fine, that's fine. Some people, you know, work really, really well with, you know, doing things, you know, at the last minute. Other folks wanna, I, I, some people have already done the discussion board for this week. That's great. Some folks have already taken the quiz for this week. That's great. However, however it works for you. But again, you've got from Monday at eight o'clock in the morning until the following Sunday at 1159 to get everything done. So that's everything that I've got for you guys. Any questions on the content that we've covered? I, uh, I have a question. Okay, Susanna. So um, for the uh, Monday, I believe the Monday, the six to nine, is that the office hours when we can come for questions or are those the mandatory, like we have to come? No, the, the office hours are, are this right now. So every Tuesday night mm -hmm. at six o'clock, I will be here. And you can come and join me if you'd like. Um, I'll tell you what we do during the office hours is we jump into the discussion board and we really dig and figure out what exactly is Mr. Gilmore asking for, <laughs> to be honest with you. And so if you feel like that would be really, really beneficial, I would really encourage you to jump on to office hours if you can. If, if Tuesday at six o'clock just is never, ever going to work for you, then we can set up a, a separate Zoom meeting on a different day or a different time. Um, we can we can do Saturday mornings, you know, whatever whatever might work for you. I want to try to accommodate uh, the fact that I know that you guys have lives outside of school. Okay, thank you. But, um, but the um, the office hours are always going to be Tuesday at six o'clock, and every Monday you will every Monday morning at um, in the morning. Um, you will get a second email that will tell you, here's the Zoom information to get onto the meeting on Tuesday at, at six o'clock. Okay. Does that answer your question, Susanna? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, okay. Any other questions from anybody? Yes, uh, where would we be able to get the textbook from? Um, you should be able to go, um, if you, get onto Canvas. Do you see where my arrow is? My cursor is right here. My bookstore. That's where you want to go. Do you see well, it? Well, yeah. Will we be getting like in paper, like in person? Or would it have to be through like um, the computer? You know what? I don't know the answer to that. Um, Jessica, you got the book already, right? How did you get it? I actually placed the order online. And a couple of books are on back order. I placed my order back on the fourth and uh, one of my books is still on back order. So uh -huh. I'm not sure because there's a high enrollment of students. So, um, but if you place it on order, just take your mask with you and they'll text, text or email you, usually email though, and let you know when your order is ready for pickup so you're not waiting around. I um, ordered mine I, on Amazon. I just rented it real quick on Amazon literally yesterday and it should be here by Friday and it, I rented it for $38. Yeah, some some of them are better on Amazon and then some of them are more. It just it just depends on your preference and what's available. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, Amazon has five left it says. Does that does that help? Yeah, that helps. Thank you. Okay. 
I, there's a lot of really good information on the My Bookstore. So, um, with Sandy, if you wanted to, you know, go there, and that's a great place to start. And if you run into any challenges, just shoot me an email, and I'll try to work with you and see what we can figure out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on what we've covered so far? Okay, so I am gonna take roll um, and um, I wanna, and then the students that are on the wait list, I need you to hang after we finish this because I need to get you guys set up and Christopher, that includes you. Um, so is Jose here? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Hi, Jose. Hi. And Elizabeth Arcelia. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Yes, here. Are you there? Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. And then Allie Blat Blattel. Hi, I'm here. Okay. Hi, Allie. Hello. And then I've got Jessica Cortez. Jessica is here. Uh, Tiffany Edmondson. Tiffany, are you here? Okay. Um, Lissandy, I've got you, you're here. Rebecca Garcia. Um, Anessa Garcia. Here. Okay. Hi, Anessa. Hello. Michelle Hernandez. <coughs> Selena Jimenez. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Savannah Jones. I am here. It's actually uh, it was supposed to be changed to Martin, but Jones or Martin is fine. Okay. Are you for in terms of your records and everything with Fresno City College? Are you under? Are you still under Jones? Yes. I've okay. Been, it's been like a two-year fight trying to. Get oh dear. To change it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. So it's Martin, right? Yes, it's just in case you see something um, like on Zoom or some of my papers that I put Martin instead of Okay, Jones. okay. It's just to let you know that it's still me. <laughs> okay, you're the only Savannah, so we'll we'll be able to, to handle that pretty good, I think. Okay. Okay, Christina Knudsen. And Angeline... Lozano. I'm here. Hi, Angeline. Hello. Katrina Lyons. Okay. Lorena. Lorena, are you here? Lorena with quite a last name. Marquez de Aguilera, Lorena Marquez de Aguilera. Okay, not here. Violeta Masqueda. Teresa Perez. Wow, okay. Um, Victoria Perez. Hello. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Uh, Tina, T-I-N-N-A. Are you <laughs> Tina, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Pumpy Pup. Okay. And am I saying your first name correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, Monique, Monique, uh, Quesada? Here. Am I, Monique, how do you say your last name? Quesada. 
Quesada, I'm sorry. Okay. And then Caressa Rodriguez. I'm oh, here. hi, Caressa. I see you on the hi. screen. And Ramona Rosales. How about Susanna Salazar? Susanna, is that you? Yes. And Sage Schaefer, I've got you. And Deborah Silveria. Madison Solis. Yeah, here. Hi, Madison. Samantha Trass. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Samantha. Hello. Giselle Vargas. Yes, here you are, Giselle, I see you. Um, James, I know James was here. Are I'm you here. here. You're here, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mignon Williams. Here. Mignon, am I saying your first name correctly? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Christy Zhang. I'm here. Hi, Christy. Hi. Uh, Lillian Yang. I know I saw Lillian earlier. There you are, Lillian. Here. Uh, Sulema Zapeta Navarro. Here. Sulema, am I saying your first name correctly? It's Sulema. Sulema, okay. That may take me a, a little bit of time, but just keep correcting me. Okay. Um, dropped, dropped. Okay. And then is there a Javier Al Alcazar? Um, Sandra Martinez? Um, Anna Calderon? Um, Miriam Garcia Ambrosio? Here. Hi, Miriam. Hi. And then Faith Franklin. And then Christopher Harris. Right here. Okay. Is there anybody whose name I did not call? Fine, but I'm on the wait list, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, and who is that? Uh, Sarah Martinez. Sarah Martinez. Oh, okay. I thought I called you, Sarah, but I guess I I miss I must have missed you. Okay, Sarah, I've got you marked. So, anybody else whose name I didn't call? My Ambrosio Hernandez. Hernandez. <clears throat> Uh, did you also get Michelle Hernandez? Michelle Hernandez, I have is absent. So she's here in the she's in the chat for. Okay. Yeah, she's having issues with her mic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so Michelle, hold on. Uh, Hernandez. Hernandez. Okay. So. Um, I'm sorry, the gentleman with the last name Hernandez, what was your first name? Ambrosio. Ambrosio, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, hold on. <clears throat> Ambrosio, were you on the wait list or were you enrolled? I, I was on the wait list as well. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so um, if Christopher, Sarah, Miriam, yes. and Ambrosio could all just hang I can get you the information that you need to get enrolled. Okay. Um, 
Those are all the folks who are on the wait list and also showed up in the meeting. So um, otherwise for the rest of you, nice to meet you. Welcome to the class. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. Um, and um, I hope to see you in office hours next Tuesday at six o'clock. Bye. 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 Thanks Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. Okay, so I want to try to do this. Okay, so I'm going to be able to get everybody in. Great. So, um, okay, so this is. This is a little complicated, but okay. So let's start with Miriam. Yes. Miriam Garcia. Okay. So Miriam, um, have you added a class by using WebAdvisor before? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. So what I what I what you're gonna do is I'm gonna okay. <laughs> Let me think this through. Okay. So. <laughs> so Miriam, I've got your email address as capital M, capital R, Garcia Ambrosia one at my sccd.edu. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to email you this. Um, can you can you see? I'm going to email you this document that gives you all the written guidance on how to enroll in the class um, using WebAdvisor. Okay. Okay. But this is the this is the code that you're going to need in order to be able to sign up for the class, okay? Okay. So the, it's gonna ask for the class identification. Seven digits. Um, professor? Yes. Um, I'm also here, I'm Teresa. Okay, so my mic me, wasn't working. Okay, okay. let me, I, I'm having to work with people one at a time. So let me just work with, uh, finish up with Miriam and then we'll get to you, Teresa, okay? Okay. Okay, so Miriam, um, here is the unique number. It'll, I'll include it in the email, but you might wanna write it down. So the identification for the class is HS slash 20-45179. And the unique number, this is the this is only for you, is 7295. And you're gonna need that when you get onto WebAdvisor to be able to register. Okay. So you type the five-digit class selection number. So that's the 54179. Um, and then you type in the four-digit authorization code which is the 7295, and then you hit submit. But all of that is in this written guidance that I'm gonna to email to you. Okay. Okay. Um, please get yourself registered as soon as possible. Okay, so. Okay. So Sarah, let's take care of you next. Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, have you registered using WebAdvisor before? No. Oh, okay. Okay, so everything that I just told Miriam, I'm gonna email you this. And um, let me make sure. So Sarah, I've got an email of capital S, capital E, Martinez11 at 
mysccd.edu. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So again, I'm going to email you the guidance and you're going to need to know that you're enrolling in HS 245179. That's the five digit code that you're going to need. And then your unique number is 7801. 7801. So that was Sarah. And I'll include this information in the email. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so we got Miriam. Okay, Teresa, what's your last name? Perez. Oh, there you are, okay. So Teresa, you're enrolled, right? Yes, I am. Okay, then you're good. I've got you marked as present. Okay, thank okay. you. So Teresa, Sarah, Miriam, you guys can all um, leave <laughs> if you want, unless you have questions or anything like that. And I'll try to get this emailed out to you either tonight or tomorrow morning. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Okay. So, okay. So Ambrosio, I, I'm trying to, okay, hold on. What's, Ambrosio Garcia, is there a, okay. No, that was, so are, is, there a Mary, is there a Miriam, is there a Miriam in your name? No. That, that was the other student that just left. See, I don't have you listed at all. I have a mirror. I, I, I was. Brosio Garcia. I'm wondering, is your, oh, wait, is your, um, is your email capital M, capital R, Garcia, Ambrosia1 at mysccd.edu? No, mine was uh, capital A, capital H, uh, well, capital A Hernandez, um, five three zero at my SEC. Okay, but you thought you were on the wait list? No, I, I was originally on the wait list. Um, when I went to check back on there um, Friday, I noticed that it was no longer on there. Oh, okay, okay. So then we just need to straight up enroll you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have you used Web Advisor before to enroll in a class? Yes. Okay. So you don't necessarily need this, the guidance. Right. Okay. Right. So if I, I can, just, I'll just give you the the number, and then that will give you what you need. But let me just note this right here. And again, just as I said with um, the other two folks please get, get onto WebAdvisor as soon as possible and get yourself enrolled. So I'm again- I'm already on there just waiting for the- Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, so again, it's um, the class is HS245179 and your unique number is 4369. So, okay. And then Christopher, we're gonna take care of you. Sounds good. Um, Christopher, have you used WebAdvisor before to enroll? Yes, I have. Okay. So, um, Christopher Harris, okay. So again, Christopher, the class is HS2045179. And your unique enrollment number is 8997. 8997. And <clears throat> excuse me, the first uh, set of numbers is uh, HS2045179. Did you say there was a 
slash in between HS and 20? I just yeah, the only the only thing that Web Advisor wants is the is the section number, which is the four five one seven nine. Gotcha. Okay. All so right. All you really need is the four five one seven nine and then the eighty nine ninety seven. Perfect. Okay. And you know what, uh, Mr. Gilmore, I would like to um, just throw this your way and maybe talk to you sometime after uh, the semester is over. But I think, you know, you're going to think you're going to be a wealth of um, knowledge for me, just to just to, you'll probably learn this in the um, uh, the assignment that I'm going to do. But so I just um, finished my bachelor's in psychology. And I was talking to um, some friends and colleagues, and they suggested that I get my master's in social work. Uh, it would probably be more appropriate. And so anyway, I, I've made that decision. I'm going to do that. Um, one of the reasons I'm taking this class is because I, you know, I realize that I, I don't have a solid background in social work. So I want to learn as much as I can before I go into the program. Mm -hmm. Um, and anyway, so I just want to throw that your way. I just think that, I don't know, I get it. You know, sometimes you can you can get a good vibe. You get a vibe from people, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Um, so I just, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'm going to be able to communicate well with you. And if so, I hope I don't, you know, I hope I, hope I don't bother you a lot. <laughs> because <laughs> because I, I can ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, well... I that's what the office hours are for. And I'm more than happy, you know, if you could, if you're able to join and, or if you, if you need a sep, you know, a sep, some separate time, we can always set up a separate Zoom meeting. The, the only challenge that I always have is that, um, you know, I don't have the same avail availability as a full-time instructor. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, cause I, I've got work and another life, you know, uh, right. other life and right. those kinds of things. But, um, absolutely. So, and, and I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't monopolize a lot of your time. No, 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 no it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I can talk about social work all day long. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I love, I love to talk, uh, talk about it with people who are enthusiastic about it, but I, I, I would be curious. So what, if, what, if, with your degree in psychology, um, what, did you have a goal where you thought you were going to end up going? Were you going to get a master's and get sure. a doctorate and hang out a shield shingle and start <laughs> people or? Right. Um, yeah. So, oh, wow. So are you from Fresno? Yeah. Have not orig not originally, but I've been here for she's 1977. Oh, wow. Okay. So do you remember Smooth Jazz 96.7? Um, I do. Yeah. Well, so I, if you ever listen, that was me. I had the Fresno after hours show. So I've, I've been in radio as you, you know, my voice lends itself. This is my voice, by the way, too. A lot of people, oh, you have a radio voice. No, this is my voice. It's not affected or nothing like, it's just me. Yeah. So, so I, the, I bring that up because it works for radio. So back in 1989, um, I, that's when I started. That's when I started my, my radio career. A friend of mine was already in and I would go hang out with him at the station um, out on Kings Canyon when it was, light 97 um and anyway he just kept telling me chris chris you need to do this you blah, 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 blah. And i said no i'm not you know that's not what i want to do yeah. um but anyway so one thing led to another and i ended up doing it and it and it took on a life of its of its own because of my personality and because of, of because of my voice so i've been in radio for years and then i did some television um moved to la and when i got to la everything changed i i that's where my focus changed. I, I, I said to myself, you know what? I need to help people. I got down there and I, this was, and I was in there, I was down there around 2008 and, you know, I was seeing homeless people and I would hear story, their, their backstories because I knew a lot of people. So I would hear backstories of these people that they used to be successful and this and that. And, da, da, da. Um, and I'm, and I'm a compassionate person. That's just who I am. I'm a sensitive dude. And I embrace it. I used to tell my mom and dad, it's like, I, this feels like a curse because you, because sensitive people, we feel things more deeply than everybody else, right? I don't yeah. know if you're sensitive or not, but, yeah. and, but you know, at, at my age, now I realize it's a blessing. So I just, I use it. But anyway, um, so yeah, I said, you know, the, the celebrities and, and the limelight and all this stuff, I, you know, I had stars in my eyes 
But I got down there and everything changed. Um, I've been kind of relatively raised in a bubble and, and protected. And when I got away from mom and dad and, and just got out on my own, I realized that there's so much there. We have a world that's in turmoil. Um, and, you know, people have always come to me, even when I was younger, there's something, I guess there's something about my personality, but people would always come to me, cousins, relatives, friends, strangers, and talk to me. And so I always knew that, you know, I wanted to help in some way, but I just didn't quite know how. So I guess, and, and, and long story short, I've always been interested in psychology because I think it's very important to know who we are, what we are, why we do what we do. And you need yeah. to know about your, you need to know about your mind. You need to know how your brain works. I mean, have this- you, have, you, have you heard about this new book that Sanjay Gupta has come out with? The, the, I, I think it's called The Healthy Brain or something like that. I started reading it's, the first chapter. It's really good. It sounds good. No, no, yeah. I, have, I have to look it up. Yeah, Dr. Gupta, he's the medical- um, medical reporter for CNN. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I like him. I anyway. like him. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. That's good. So, so yeah, so then I, that's, that was, that's the background. Wanted to do, you know, psychology, but then, like I said, I, I have some friends who are social workers and I never, um, Mr. Gilmore, I never thought, I, I mean, I'm thinking social, no, that's not, I don't, but, but see that it, I didn't know, I didn't know about it. I really didn't know. Right. Uh, you, you, we, when we hear about social work, we have these ideas about just like we do with everything, unless you're um, familiar with it. So I, I, it just wasn't an option until I started doing the research. And a lot of the things that I want to do um, can be accomplished with a degree, you know, an MSW. And um, mm -hmm. there's many avenues. There's so many avenues that you can uh -huh. take and the knowledge uh, that you gain. And that's what's really attracting me. I, you know, I want the knowledge. I want, I want the resources to help people you know there's been so many times i've been talking to friends and i realize it's like you know you can you know you can help people with your with your experience and knowledge only to a certain point and then there's other areas of knowledge that you need depending on you know what you're dealing with what's in front of you and i don't and i, and I realize i don't have that i need a well-rounded foundation from which to work off of and I think that the, you know going down this path would be the best uh, the best route. So listening to you, and I'm thinking, wow, you know what? I can really talk to Mr. Gilmore, and I think he's really going to be able to be a, a a great resource now. And and who knows? We might even be colleagues one day. <laughs> you know who knows? I, I'm getting closer and closer to retirement. So <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> okay. But, um, but no, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that there's a level of enthusiasm. There's you know yeah. there's there's students that often take this class because it meets a requirement or it just happens to fit in their schedule. So it's always great when you're talking to a student who's got a level of enthusiasm. So, um, and I, I think that the one thing that I always tell students and I didn't say it tonight is that by the end of the class, you're either gonna say, oh my God, I think I found my passion or, oh my God, this is not even what I wanna do. Yeah. Um, but most folks find that by the end of this class that, you know, they've either decided, yeah, this is the right choice for me and I want to move forward or, you know, I need to keep looking and, and identify something else. So, hey. so anyway, right. hi, hi. Hi, let me see if I can get some light in here. This is, I'm getting ready to go for a run. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, so I, I didn't, I did, had had that block because I was eating earlier and. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, not trying to be incognito or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, looking forward to the semester and <laughs> learning as much as I can. Um, yeah, this is, I'm really enthusiastic about this, really excited, so. Great, great. So do the Tuesday nights at six o'clock, does that work for your schedule or? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Just to give you some more background information, I actually work at Fresno City College. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I work in the police department, so if you ever need okay. me you'll probably be, we'll probably be talking in that way if you need to get, oh, well, actually you won't be coming on campus, will you? No. Uh -uh. Yeah. So maybe not. Yeah. Back in the day, I, haven't know, been, I haven't been on campus since, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. Anyway. So that's, that's, that's a little bit of the backstory, my backstory. Um, so just want to let you know that. Great. Great. Well, I'm happy to have you in the class, Chris. I'm glad you. we were able to get you in. So I appreciate and, um, again, if you can join us for um, the office hours, that'd be great.
yeah, I'm going to, that's definitely something I'm going to um, make a habit. I want to definitely get in, involved in that. And um, I'm just looking at my writing just to confirm my unique number is 8997, right? 8997. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Mr. Gilmore, okay. thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too.